kind of fit together our personality wise and now we always friends off on and off the basketball court always hang out do dinners etc etc and i felt at the time when he got traded and i used to shock them because he was always he was he was promised a lot for sacramento the way he's playing is is upsides a lot and i feel like I said, man, this business is tricky. You never know what can happen. You know, I always tell him, I say, yo, if they say they won't trade you, but they will trade you, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, and I, he understand that it was really more of a business than, than what it was and uh, business side of it. And uh, we connect on the plane and uh, we said, man, this opportunity, you left Sacramento, you had a really special point guard ahead of you, De'Aaron Fox, and uh, they had to pick one. And Sacramento was a place where they had to make a move. And, and uh, they made the right move, as you can see. And uh, I said, look at Indiana's opportunity to you to like, you know, start your stuff, start your own brand, stand and start, be yourself, be Tyrese, and make a name for yourself. And uh, I think he's came in his own self. You know, I didn't see it coming up. I know he's always a good player, special, but uh, as, as you watch him grow and grow, he's so smart. He's, he works his butt off each and every day. One of the hardest, hardest workers I've been around. And he's a special teammate, you know, you tell like the way he, Pass the ball, share the ball, on off the court. He's a senior off, off the off the court to come um, start dinners, do a function, Halloween parties, whatever. He's a team oriented, honor oriented, team oriented guy. So uh, special kid, man. Uh, you know you don't see a lot of guys like that around, and uh, he's a brother for sure. Steve, over here on the right side. All right, buddy. Um, players who rack up a lot of assists are dependent on their teammates to actually make the shots off their passes. Players who are so. Um, meticulous with the ball that they don't have turnovers. How dependent are they on their teammates to be able to get the pass that's here or save the ball that's going to go out of bounds or somehow, you know, be like first baseman scooping balls out of the dirt or, or are all his passes right where they need to be? I mean, it is, I, that's what's making him so special. He knows how to get the ball where the money dies. Uh, he does a great job of finding his teammates and he's very deceptive and uh, he just will never know what he's going to do and he's going to be ready. And uh, he's one of those guys that can throw your grenade. He's going to give you a great shot. He's going to make the right play. And uh, we trust him to make the right play. And um, fast, from the past three years he's been in Indiana, he's made the right play and the right pass. You know, yes, he's not going to be perfect every night, but scheme of the NBA season, he's, he's special what he does. Front row on your left. Hey, buddy. Dan with you at the Los Angeles Times. Um, covering the Lakers, it feels like I hear your name every six months or so in some <laughs> version of a trade rumor. To, to be mentioning trades, um, it seemed like it was going to happen in 2021 in the summer to the Lakers, and then they ended up going in a different direction. Do you? What were your memories of that? Did you? Did you? Was there a time where you thought you were going to be a Laker? Yeah, I was in the I was in the Bahamas. I was by the pool, had my camp, and I think he's going ready to go to another island. And uh, my agent called me, and he was like, "Yo, you want to be a Laker?" And after that, I saw a tweet. You know, what was tweeted out, you know, it's, it's kind of true. And after that, five minutes later, I see they pivot. So, uh, but that's when you, that's what happens when you're dealing with the business of this NBA, things happen. But uh, yeah, I heard a lot of rumors the night before. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, God don't make no mistakes what he does, you know. If it happened, it happened. But if it didn't, you know, I, I'd have been fine either way. Does this feel a little bit like a kind of serendipitous thing that, you know, here you are on this stage and that's the team that you guys have to be? No, nah, it's not about that. You know, it's, it's, yeah, we here, they won, we won, we here face each other in the championship game. And uh, we're going to face them two times more after this home and away too. So, uh, great opportunity to go there to play against them. Lakers are the Lakers, as we all know. Uh, but we're going to come here, be humble, and uh, be ready for the game tomorrow. Dustin, here in the front. Sorry. What's up, Dom? What's going on, man? Uh, Ty was obviously mentioning, you know, wanted to get you in the playoffs. I guess, what's this event been like, considering that you haven't, been a part of something like that yet. What, what were your expectations of what it was going to be and, and what's it been like now that you're actually here? And you know, I, know, I never played a playoff game before, but it feels like every game that was being played is playoff intensity, vibes, uh, scouting, known guys' tendencies, guys are more locked in, guys are more dialed in. The seriousness of the game, you know, is you can tell that every possession matters. You know, when you miss a box out, coaches are on you, it's like you miss a box out, you know, close out, you know, rebounding, all this stuff. It's a lot more intentional stuff that, that we are more focused on lock in. So I'm um, just, you know, happy to experience that type of uh, level of play, high level of play. And uh, hopefully we can just keep on carrying over. You know, this tournament, yes, there's a lot on the line, but it's not about the money, but it's playing, playing, us playing basketball, us playing together as a team, could be here in Vegas, having team variety, loving each other, and uh, getting to know you guys much better, and uh, having fun with them, man. And, uh, I feel like when we all have having fun, good things happen.
Take final two over here and on the back. Yeah, but but you were one of the few guys that get, got to play in the final four. I was wondering what that compares to this, like emotionally. Don't the final four. four. Yeah, I had a bad loss in final four. You can't talk about that. <laughs> but it was special getting there, y'all. Don't we'll talk about the final four. <laughs> and then I was wondering. Uh, what you thought about OU's hot start so far? Uh, Oklahoma, they're doing, you know, I just peeped at their right now, 19. I think they're going to really guard it compared to Addison. Uh, he's special. As I've seen you guys post about him a little bit too. So uh, so uh, I'm, I'm always tapping Oklahoma. Uh, Oklahoma's home uh, is where I'll be able to make a name for myself. And uh, hopefully they continue to do great. I'm always watching. Last question on the back row on the aisle. Hi, Robbie from LA AFP. How would you describe the style, a baser style of playing these days? I hear aggressive, but maybe you can develop. I think uh, us, our, our pace is uh, style of play is up tempo, fast. Uh, is reading gap often, uh, reading gap offense, making guys making plays, uh, playing on a random where a team doesn't know when they're calling plays, just going there and playing and being unpredictable. And uh, I feel like when you're unpredictable on offensive end and uh, teams don't know what you're doing, it's hard to scout. So just read and react and. Uh, Run out and play a pace. My guy, you don't give my guy an answer? All right, George. It's my boy, man. You give him an answer. Hold on, we'll get the Come on, man. He <laughs> raises his hands all day. <laughs> Not, um, you know, you just talked about, you know, how this team is, you know, continuity wise. I watched, like, you guys' first action. You guys made, like, seven passes into a, a Miles Lob, you know, on the backside. Talk about that, you know, in terms of that and the spacing and then picking up 94 feet. A lot of teams don't do that. Like, just even have, you know, the courage to pick up Dame Lillard, 94 feet. The different things that you guys bring to this table is a lot different, so you can explain that. You know, just, you know, like making them uncomfortable. I feel like you let good players play with space, they feel comfortable. You don't want them to get in the rhythm, you know, and uh, especially like, as tomorrow, Braun, he's gonna, he needs to be, they, they all, they want, all good players gonna play with space and we try to eliminate them not to play in space and uh, make it hard, no matter what you do, they're always gonna be great because they're good players, they're special, they've been doing this thing for all their lives, but uh, trying to make it not easy on them, not too comfortable, because when the NBA player is comfortable, it could be a long night, so we try to eliminate that. And on the offensive end, just read and react, just making the right play and uh, being unselfish and trusting your teammates to make the other play if something comes up again. Do you feel like, um, because you said a lot of times teams don't know what you guys are doing, I've been learning a lot of sets. Sometimes yeah. I don't know what you guys are doing. Right. Y'all playing within each other. Yeah. Just, um. How is how is bit how is that? And how do you get to that point? Is the question. Uh, a lot of practice, but then trusting the next action, and then enough that no one was a good shot, bad shot. You know the shot what we want, and uh, knowing your role on the team and what you're able to do and what you cannot do. And uh, if it's not there, move it on. And if not, not get the ball to tie and make them make something. And if not, blur, go screen, back screen, flare screen, chest screen, whatever. Read and react and get to the next action and get to the best shot you can get to. Appreciate it. Respect.